hear it in my voice as per usual. I am nervous. Because um, I want to. Because I want to get it right. Uh, and, um, it's always just amazes me how God just. He chose this broken vessel, this this uh, this shattered pot, um, to put wine in. That's crazy. That's crazy to pour out to someone else. Now I'm not drinking. I'm just saying, <laughs> vessel. But um, let's pray because I I need my spirit to be where it needs to be. Dear Lord, I just thank you. I thank you again for all that you are. Dear Lord, you know I cannot do this without you. I, I, I'll mess it up. I'll say the wrong things. But in you, dear Lord, give me the words to say. Give me the direction to give. I pray right now, dear Lord, that, that they don't see me. They don't see me, but they see you in me. Hide me behind the cross today, dear Lord so that your word can go forth. I pray that you would just calm my nerves, calm my spirit, and allow me to speak your truth today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So good morning, good morning, good morning, Youth Sunday. Look at all the young people. Look at all the young people. Um, Y'all don't know what it is to have a good group of young people in this church, and the ones we have here are phenomenal. Amen. They are phenomenal. So we're going we're gonna to give them and you as adults a message today. So today we're going to be coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 17, and um, we're, we're going to be talking to uh, the future today, and we're going to be talking to our young people, and this, the title today for, from 1 Samuel 17, verses 46 through 47, today's title would be, Success is Just a Stone's Throw Away. Success Amen. is Just a Stone's Throw Away. Here we are, we've come to another graduation season, and later on, like Pastor said, we'll be honoring some of these individuals today. But we're also coming up on a new school year where our youth will be going back to school, they'll be back in classrooms, they'll, they'll be back studying and taking tests and participating in extracurricular activities and clubs and all this stuff to build up their academic resume mm -hmm. as a foundation for their future. A future to which they all plan to be successful. And as parents and family, we wanna see them become successful too, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, right. But what is success and how do we define it? The dictionary defines success in these words. It's the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. It's the attainment of fame, wealth, social status, or the good or bad outcome of an, of an undertaking. Mm -hmm. But the most common definition for success is the favor, favorable or desired outcome the favorable or desired outcome. So when we look at success, we're looking for a favorable or desired outcome. Mm -hmm. There are many books in the market right now that try to give you a blueprint to success. If you just Google it or search Amazon, you'll be bombarded with all types of titles. I even taught a class at one point called Student Success, which we had a textbook for. These all claim that if you follow these 8,583 steps, <laughs> then you will reach your desired goal or your favorable outcome. You'll be successful. Although all these books offer some insight, I found that the Bible lays out steps for success in several of its books. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at David in this chapter of Samuel and how success was just a stone's throw away. So let's Let's look at this verse, 1 Samuel 17, 46 through 47. It reads like this. It says, today the Lord will hand you over to me. Today I'll strike you down and remove your head and give the corpses of the Philistines, of the Philistine camp 
to the birds of the sky and the wild creatures of the earth, then all the world will know that Israel has a God. All this and this whole assembly will know that it is not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will hand you over to us. This was Daniel shouting to Goliath right before Goliath's de demise. David. Did I say David? Mm -hmm. I meant to say David. Mm -hmm. This was David shouting to Goliath mm -hmm. right before his demise. This was an outward showing of David's confidence in God that he would successfully deliver him and his people from the hands of this giant. But how did David get here? What steps did he take to ensure his success? Let's, let's look at the story. Goliath and the Philistine army gathered to battle King Saul and the men of Israel. Mm -hmm. The two armies stood on two mountains with a valley in between, and Goliath challenged the Israelite army to send out their best man to battle. And if he was able to defeat Goliath, then the Philistines would be their servants. But if not, the Israelites would be the servants of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Goliath was a big dude. He stood six cubits and a span, which in today's measurements would be a little taller than 11 feet. He was carrying over 100 pounds of armor, and his shield was so large a whole other man had to carry it. This is how big Goliath was. He came out every day and he shouted at the Israelites, daring them to send somebody out to fight him. The Israelites, though, they were, they were scared. Right? They thought that there was no way that this was going to end well. But not David. He believed that the Israelites would prevail over Goliath and the Philistines. Why? Why did David believe this? What made him think that the Israelites or even himself could be successful? The passage in 1 Samuel tells us some keys to success. Let's look at them. The first thing we see in this passage is that success requires service. Success requires service. How do I know? Verse 17 of 1 Samuel 17 says, Now Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and then these ten loaves of, to your bro of bread to your brothers and hurry to their king. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are doing and bring back some assurance from them. Then uh, they are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left his flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out, as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to back to their battle positions and shouting their battle cries. See, success requires some service. David was asked to take an ephah of grain or ephah of grain to, and 10 loaves and some bread and some cheese to his brothers while they were fighting on the, out on the front line. Now, an ephah of grain weighs about 36 pounds. Add that to some cheese and some bread. And he had to wake up early, leave his flock in the hands of another person, go out and make sure his older brothers had something to eat in battle. Mm -hmm. This is service. David was asked to pause his life to make sure somebody else was okay. He was sent to serve others. You might ask, how does service or serving others lead to success? Well, Hebrews 13, 16 says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Proverbs 19, 17 says, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deeds. Mm -hmm. See, service to others is for a reason. It's pleasing to God. Amen. As a believer, isn't that our goal? Yeah. To please God? Mm -hmm. So if we reach our goal by serving, then we're successful. God also remembers our service and will, pray, will repay us for our deeds. So by being a blessing, we are blessed. That sounds like success to me. Then James in chapter 2, 14 through 17 says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? Can such faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes or lacks daily food, and one of you say to them, Go in peace, stay warm and be well fed, but you don't give them what they need, mm -hmm. what good is it? Yeah, yeah. In this same way, faith, if it does not have works, 
it is dead. Yeah. How, listen, how can you call yourself a believer mm -hmm. if you're not putting it into action? How are you going to see your brother or sister naked and hungry and just say, God bless? <laughs> Hope you do well. And you do nothing to help them. That's not, that's not a successful showing of the faith. Right, right. The Bible says that this faith is dead. Mm -hmm. See, God wants us to serve so that we don't think of ourselves any higher than any other body, any other persons. Yeah, yeah. See, Philippians 2 4 says that we should not be doing things out of selfish ambition, but considering the well being of others. God doesn't want us to get a big head about being a believer. He wants us to be humble and look out for others. How beautiful of a world would it be if we all looked out for each other? There was one time I, when I was a kid, I was a, I was a Cub Scout. Shout out to Barbara James Pack 197. <laughs> Cub Scout, and we, we had to do service missions. Mm -hmm. And so we call ourselves getting ready to do the service project. And so we said, you know, we're going we're gonna to clean up the neighborhood. And so Barbara James found out that uh, for every can you collected, you got a, a penny for every aluminum can mm -hmm. down at the supermarket. My wife is laughing right now. So we said, we're going we gonna to clean up, mm -hmm. right? So for, for a week, me and my troop we, we picked up aluminum can after aluminum can after aluminum can for about two weeks on the railroad tracks, trolley tracks. I mean, we, we gathered a lot of cans. Mm. And we just knew for ourselves, because this was going to cover our dues. Mm. We said, we about to kill them. And so we collected the cans. We gave them to Miss James. And she took them down to the supermarket. She came back a week later. And she said, guys, I have some good news. I have some bad news. And we said, okay, well, give this either or. She said, you guys collected 75 pounds of aluminum cans. Wow. We said, wow, mm -hmm. that's a lot. She said, the bad news is I was wrong. It wasn't a penny a can, it was a penny a pound. <laughs> let, let me give you some math. Uh, one, one pound of aluminum cans equals 31 cans. You multiply that by 75, we collected 2,325 cans. She opened her hand and showed us 75 cents. See, we were doing this service for our own gain. See, success requires service. Sometimes the success is not going to look like what you want it to look like, but we were trying to do something for ourselves instead of just focusing on cleaning the community or making sure things were a little bit better. Listen, we still committed a service, and we were still successful, but understand that success requires service and not selfishness. That's good. That's good. That's a lot of cans. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I see in this passage is that successful people ask questions and seek wise counsel. See, David gets to the battle. He hands over the stuff he has to give to his brothers and uh, the leaders. He hands over the supplies. And while he's there, Goliath comes out like he usually does. And he does his challenge thing. He shouts out what he usually shouts out, who's going to fight me? And the Israelite men are shook again. But when we look at verse 25, they're, they're talking about what happens for the person who delete, defeats Goliath. So verse 25 says, now the Israelites have been saying, do you see this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes, taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near him, uh, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. Look, 
David wants to know, what do I need to do to put myself in a better position? The NRV says that the men had been saying what would happen. So I'm sure David heard them talking, but he still wanted to make sure, right? So see, David didn't assume that he knew it all already. David didn't assume that he knew it all already. He asked questions. Young person, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't think you know it all already. Don't be afraid to ask what needs to be done, whether it be in class, at home, or even here in the church. Ask your questions so that you can know what you need to do to put yourself in a better position. See, Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. Mm -hmm. See, David asked more than once. Look, they talked about it and David was like, wait, uh, what does the man get who beats him? And the troops told him again. Then the brothers heard David talking to the troops and they got mad and sent David to King Saul. They were like, get out of here. You keep asking too many questions. But before David leaves, he turns to another group of soldiers and he'd be like, uh, what did they get again? <laughs> and the soldiers told him the same answer. Look, grown-ups, be glad your children are asking you questions, looking for insight because successful people ask questions. Don't turn them away like David was from his brothers. They just might ask somebody else. At least David got the answers that were truthful. Our children may not get the same. Amen. They may not get the same. See, David was not only asking questions, but he sought wise counsel. He was sent to King Saul, right? David was sent to seek wise counsel from Saul. The beautiful thing here is that David was not afraid to speak to someone older than him who might have been through the same experiences before. And then he shared his thoughts. Young person, older person, don't be afraid to share your heart with your parents. Mm -hmm. They have been where you've been. Amen. They have been in battle before. They have answers you don't have. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to seek wise counsel. Don't be afraid to share your heart. Mm -hmm. You may get some information. Proverbs 19, 8 says, whoever gets sense loves his own soul. Who, he who keeps understanding will discover good. Yeah. If you love your own soul, you will seek understanding. Proverbs 19, 20 says, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Young person, the knowledge you get is for your good. It's for your soul. And with it, you will discover good. Mm -hmm. Now that's success. Mm -hmm. But adults, you're not left out. Mm -hmm. You can also benefit from asking questions and seeking wise counsel. Look, Matthew 18, 2 through 4 says, unless you become like children, you will never inherit the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. The Lord honors this childlike faith. Seek him for all things and seek wisdom. Uh -huh. yeah. We're not left out. We're not left out. But here you go. Parents, adults, just like Saul, listen to your kids. David shared his heart mm -hmm. and showed commitment to God so much that Saul was like, hmm, all right, just go ahead and fight. <laughs> just go ahead. David shared enough of his foundation of his faith. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4.12, do not despise kids because of their youth. If they are setting a good example mm -hmm. in speech and in conduct, yeah. if they're setting a good example in speech and conduct, hear them out. Yeah, yeah. Hear them out. Yeah. They just might have something to say. They just might make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's listen to our kids. Mm. Successful people ask questions and seek wise counsel. The next thing we see in this passage is that we, we have to recognize a big thing. We have to recognize that the world's success is not the same as God's. The world's success is different than God's success. See, we live in a culture that floods our youth with a do-whatever-feels-right mentality. In this world, it, it, success is measured by whatever feels good and right to you as an individual. What do I mean? 
if you're struggling to pass a, a test, cheat. They're not going to know. If you can't afford it, steal it. This, this store's got insurance for stuff like that. Right? If, if you don't like how you feel, get high. Get drunk. Smoke something. It'll make you feel better about yourself. Your body count doesn't matter. Got some old heads looking. Your body count is how many people you've had sex with. Your body count doesn't matter. As long as it feels good, do it. As a matter of fact, if you don't even like your gender, you can change that too. As long as you are happy with it. See, the world's success is different than God's success. Our kids are being told that success is however you want it to look, as long as it's not harming anyone else. And who cares what others think? Yeah. It's your life. You can do with it as you please. The world will force you to try on anything to gain success. David went through this same thing in this passage. He was given the green light to go to battle, but in verse 36, the world tried to give him something that didn't fit. Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and bron a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword on the tunic, and he tried walking around, but because he was not used to them, he said, I can't go in these. He said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. See, the world will try to fit you with whatever it thinks will make you happy and successful. It will wrap you in clothes, in its clothes. It will give you an armor that's too heavy for you to bear. And it'll even give you weapons that won't work against the thing that you're battling. And then try to tell you that you're going to be all right. Just, just go ahead. But my Bible says that you got to shake them off. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. David said, I can't move in this stuff. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. David took it off and he grabbed a stick, some stones, and a sling and walked out to Goliath. David knew that with God, that's all he needed. Why? Because God knows what you need. Why? Because he knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. It was then, when you were being formed, that he had plans for you to give you hope and a future. I don't know about you, but hope and a future sounds like success. Hope and a future sounds like success. See, the reason why it's difficult for the world to recognize why you're not doing what the world says to do for success is because our ways are not his ways. They can't understand why God got you on this path. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Why? Because his thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are higher than ours. See, while the world is trying to keep you down here, God is trying to get you up here. And the world's success looks the same across the board. Money, cars, fame, more followers. But God has called you to be, to be a particular or peculiar people, to be different so that people can see the Christ in you. He don't want you looking at the, like the world. The, the Bible says to be in the world, but not of the world. We have to know that the world sees success totally different than God. So we know, we know that success requires service, and you, you have to seek wise counsel and ask questions, and we know that the world, success is different than God's success. But finally, the key to success in this passage is that success is just a stone's throw away. Success is just a stone's throw away. See, David finally gets himself together. He grabs his staff, his, his five smooth stones, and his, his sling, and he goes out there and stands before Goliath with boldness. He gets out there. Goliath feels some type of way because he sees this little boy coming out there. The Bible describes um, David as a handsome boy. That's, that's what it says. Read it. Uh, it says, how dare you send this little boy out here to fight me and threatens to feed David to the birds and the wild animals. 
And this David shouts our opening verse. He says, this day, the Lord delivers thee into my hands, and I will smite thee. This is the King James. I need you to hear how gangster this sounds. It says, I will smite thee. Uh, somebody tell me they're going to smite me. I feel some type of way. He said, and take thine hair from thee. I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all assemblies shall know that the Lord saved not by sword or spear, but this battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So, so Goliath's like, I'm going to feed you to the birds and the animals. And David's like, I'm going to feed your whole squad <laughs> to the birds and the animals. See, David knew that by faith that God would help him be delivered. He knew that God would deliver him and the Israelites from the Philistines. <laughs> Young person, God wants to bring you to a place of victory, yeah. a place of success. And all he's asking is for you to believe that he will get you there if you trust him. Yeah. Yeah. All he wants you to do is believe that he can take you there if you can trust him. David had this kind of faith. He had faith that God would bring him the victory. His faith was built on what God had already done for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, where, where do you see this at? Look, when they told David he was too young to win, he told them in verse 34 through 37, he said, well, one time a lion came and took one of my sheep, and I tracked it down, and I took the sheep, and I killed the lion with my bare hands. He said, then I did it again with a bear. A bear came and took a sheep. I chased him down and killed him with my bare hands. He said, if the Lord can deliver me from the mouth of a lion yeah, yeah. and the paw of the bear, yeah. then surely he can deliver me from this Philistine. Yeah. See, we have to remember what God has brought us through. Yeah. Young people, you've been through some stuff. Grown ups, we've been through some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. we got to remember where God has brought us through and that he will never leave us yeah. nor forsake us. God has never let us down. David knew that God had never let him down. So he had confidence in Christ. Just, just know what you've been through. That's why success is just the stones throw away. David grabbed five smooth stones. He had no idea that the first one would be a direct hit. What, what does that mean? What he did know is that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Yes. David knew that God was going to make one of those stones work. Yes. He had faith. David knew in his heart what Luke 137 says. He says, with God, nothing is impossible. Yes. So when it comes to success, keep throwing those stones at the giants in your path. Those stones that say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When, when you've got a test coming up, you throw a stone and trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. When you're dealing with some issues that look bigger than what you are, say, he is the vine and I am the branches. If I remain in him and he in me, I will bear much fruit. Apart from him, I can do nothing. When, when situations arise in school that you think you have no idea how it's going to turn out, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. When you try to decide if you should go with them or just be out by yourself, yeah. order my steps yeah. and let no sin have dominion over me. Yeah. Throw those stones. Yeah. With, with the faith of a mustard seed, yeah. I can move mountains. Yeah. Keep yeah. throwing those stones of faith and God will remove the things that are in your way. Put your trust in God. Go out and put your faith to work. That means do your homework. Study for your tests. Use your tongue to build people up and not tear them down. Carry yourself with the love of God and he will give you victory. He will grant you the desires of your heart. You'll reach your goals. Mm -hmm. You'll be successful. Yeah. This year, to come, you, you will be in a place that God has you mm -hmm. if you put your faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Success is just a stone throws away. Mm -hmm. Success is just a stone throw away. Thank you.
Minister Joe, thank you for that encouraging word this morning. Amen and amen. Success is just a stone's throw away. Lord have mercy. Uh, we all have some giants in our lives that need to be slain. We have some giants in our lives that need to be, that we need to smite. Right? Amen. Um, and with Jesus Christ, we can do that. We don't want to assume that everyone in here knows Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. We don't want to assume that everyone in here uh, has accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior. And so with every head bowed and with every eye closed, we want to pray this morning. We want the believers to pray this morning because someone in here has some giants that they need to slay, but they just don't know how. And, and, and Jesus Christ uh, can do that for us. If we just believe in him, if we just accept him, if we just uh, pick up those smooth stones that we see in his word, those smooth stones that we can use to slay those giants that, that stand in our way. And so... Uh, as we pray this morning, as the believers pray this morning, um, we just want to ask the question, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you accepted uh, that, that he is the Son of God that went to the cross and, and they hung him high, they stretched him wide, and, and, and he dropped down his head and he died, but on the third day, he arose from the dead for our sins. Sins that hadn't even been committed yet. He, he rose on the third day for us. That he sacrificed himself for us. If you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, you'll never have to face your giants alone. You'll be able to walk with him and talk with him and, and hear from him and, and feel him in your spirit. If you want to know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins this morning, if you want to accept him, as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, as the saints pray, just slip up your hand. Just slip up your hand if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior this morning. Amen. I see that hand. I see that hand. Jesus wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to guide you. He wants to protect you. He already loves you. And so, as you slipped up your hand to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, and if you are online and you want to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, I am a sinner and deserve the punishment for my sin. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. I ask for God's forgiveness. I will follow Jesus and I confess him as my Lord and my Savior. I receive the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ today. If you prayed this prayer, welcome to the family of Jesus Christ. Angels are rejoicing in heaven, and we need to rejoice right now. Amen. We need to be rejoicing this morning. Amen. If you're in the sanctuary, uh, we saw your hand, and so we will be speaking to you after the service. We welcome you, we want to disciple you, we want to walk with you, we want to help you um, as someone helped us as we began this walk and as we continue to be helped as we continue this walk because none of us have this thing down, amen, amen. amen. Um, if you are online and you prayed this prayer, please text us at 267-991-8907. That's 267-991-8907. Zero seven. 
I want to pray with you this morning because, um, as I said, we all have giants that we need to slay in our lives. And God gives us what we need. He gives us his word. He gives us uh, his, his disciples. He gives us people to walk with us and talk with us and, and guide us. People who uh, have already been through some of the things that we are going through. But young people, as parents, right? For the rest of us, that is our peers. That is uh, people who are uh, believers, people who are walking in the spirit. And so we want to pray with you this morning. I don't know about you, but, but there's some giants uh, that, that we all need to slay. And so if you want prayer this morning, just slip up your hand and we'll pray with you this morning. I want prayer this morning. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that we received this morning, Lord. That it was packed, Lord, with, with your, um, your word, Lord. Um, and that we know, Lord, that your word, Lord, does not uh, return void. Father, we have some giants, Lord, that we need to slay in our lives, Father. And your word, Lord, provides us with those smooth stones that we need, Lord. Uh, your word provides us with the strength that we need, Lord, with the courage that we need to stand up against things that just seem insurmountable, things that it seems like can't be defeated, Lord, but we know that the battle is not ours, Lord. The battle is yours. And so, Father, we just stand, Lord, just waiting, Lord, for you to fight our battles for us, Father. We stand waiting for you to slay our giants for us, Lord. We stand, Lord, waiting for you to give us the strength and the courage and the might that we need in order to overcome. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives, Lord, and we look back on, on those lions and those bears that we face, Lord, those things that you brought us through that we didn't think that we would get through, Lord, but with you, all things are possible. Lord, you brought us through before, and we know that you can bring us through now. And so we stand, Lord, just believing, Lord, on your name. Stand just believing on your strength. Stand just believing on who you are, Lord, your holiness, Father. We stand before you, Lord, waiting, Lord, um, expectantly, Lord, for you to fight our giants for us, Lord. We pray, Lord, for every hand that was raised and even for those that were not this morning, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would give us what we need, Lord, in order to walk through, Lord. Knowing, Lord, that, that you are going before us, that you are going with us, that you are holding our hands, Lord, that you are holding us up, Father, that you are giving us what we need, Lord, in order to win. Lord, success comes from you, Lord. And so we pray, Lord, that we would be looking to you for your success, Lord, not the world's success. Lord, not more followers on Facebook and Twitter, Lord, but, but that we would be followers of you. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would give us everything that we need, Lord, to slay the giants in our lives this morning, Father. We pray, Lord, with faith, Lord, and with expectation this morning, Father. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen.